Hey, what's up? This is Zach at Token2049, Matt from Holochain. Super excited to be here and to experience the Holochain activation. So I'm just going to go up to this booth, talk with Matt, and see what's to see. So what's up? What are you guys doing here? Take us through the experience. We've put together basically a living room uh, here in the middle of a, a giant conference uh, in Singapore. And we are showing off a mobile application. So the, this fall, the first mobile phone in the world shipping with a Holochain app is coming out. And that's the Volaphone Quintus shipping this fall. It's going to have an application on it that's a peer-to-peer -peer encrypted chat app. Uh, and that doesn't need web servers. So it's kind of like Telegram, but without web servers in the middle, which means even if the phone company went away, even with Holochain went away, your app could still keep running because it's operating on just the devices of the users themselves. Let's Come see on, it. Let's yeah, go. let's get Let's check it out. So the, the space is cozy, right? Um, we've got a, a little bit of, uh, we've got a, a couch, we've got some sofas, we've got some plants. The plants aren't real. Don't be fooled. <laughs> um, I was fooled. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and we're showing off a little bit of, you know, what's, what is Holochain kind of video. And we've also got a, a demonstration of our uh, Holochain app running live. We have a handful of, of the Vola mobile phones here and and we're you know letting people play with them, touch them. Should we check out the phone? Sure, absolutely. I think that's going to be the... That'll be the main thing. To... I'm going to hand you this for a second. So okay, this great. Should be, that should be that. Okay, so you've got, you've got the one that's public. And... Um, just going to, I'm going to restart the app. Life is good when you're in Singapore. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. This is super cool, by the way. This is a custom Volha? Vola. Vola. That's super cool. Look, it's peer to peer, which should mean things happen quickly, and they do. Um, so I'm going to hit hey, three, two, one, send, sent. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, instant. Yeah. And no web servers, right? So this is, this is actually kind of a funny thing to show at an event like this. I've been trying to connect with people on Telegram or Signal or WhatsApp, but the connections don't work because there's thousands of people at this event. We have a 20,000 person conference. The network is totally overloaded. And so nobody's able to talk. But these devices are on a local Wi-Fi hotspot, right? They're not reaching out to the rest of the internet. They're able to chat peer to peer. Um, now they could reach out to the internet, but they don't have to. And so you're able to have local connectivity be good enough to enable the communication to happen. So yeah, we're here with the team and I kind of wanted to just do a deeper dive onto the partnership and kind of how we ended up how we ended up here so can you guys talk about the phone first of all like what how did you what is the vola so the Vol vola phone is a company based out of germany they are a privacy and simplicity oriented company their their belief is that it's really important that people are in control of their own data that they that the interface works for them um they actually were thinking that initially their customers, and they've been around for about five years, they've been shipping phones for about five years. They were thinking initially that their customers would be, you know, very security minded, maybe techie people. And one of the, the customer groups that showed up initially that they weren't expecting was elderly folks. Oh, wow. Because they had made phones that were really simple. And in fact, if you take a look, they have this thing called Springboard, and I can kind of show it off. Um, and with Springboard, you've got an interface with which you can interact with all of your different applications, but it's simple. It's not the app determining what everything looks like. It's all monochrome. It's this app, it's that app, I wanna go here. Um, and it was simple enough that it wasn't overwhelming for senior citizens who had only used you know, a flip phone or whatever, never a smartphone. And so a lot of them said, wow, this is the first smartphone I can use. Right. And so that's some of their customer base. The founder, Dr. Wurzer, uh, the founder of Vola, 
He is really passionate about privacy, simplicity, and freedom. He thinks it's important that people be able to be in control of their own lives. And he sought us out, basically. He, he found out about us through a whole chain community member, a guy named Hedayat, uh, who's wonderful. Uh, and uh, once he learned what Holochain was, he was like, okay, that's what we need. We, we want this on our phones. And he basically has pushed and pushed. We were planning to put a mobile support out after our launch of Holohost. That was gonna, we were gonna prioritize that later. That wasn't good enough for Dr. Wurzer. He needed it now because they're shipping a phone this fall. And so we and some of the other people in our ecosystem really put in a fair bit of work to try to get mobile, at least this initial version of mobile, out the door and, and into people's hands. And why do you think that in this time of, uh, I guess, such high tech, you know, everyone's talking about AI, these different things. Why is P2P like so important when so much has moved to the cloud, so much has sort of moved away from P2P? Like, yeah. what is it? Well, I, I'll, I'll, I'll frame it a little differently. I'll say peer to peer is a part of a, a robust solution, mm -hmm. right? So the cloud is cool until you don't have access to the cloud. Like all these people in this conference who aren't able to message one another because the network is jammed because there's too many people in the conference. But that sucks. That's actually a really bad user experience, right? Um, now, they all have devices that have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on them. They could be able to connect directly and say, exchange messages, except the devices all assume that the cloud is available. Well, it's not always available, right? So the part of the, one of the, the words that gets thrown around, around in addition to peer-to-peer, -peer, and it's not the same thing, but it's related, it's close, is local first. This idea that it happens locally on my device first. I'm the source of information. I'm the authority. I'm authoring it, I'm recording it locally, and then I'm sharing it elsewhere. That elsewhere could be with others in a peer-to-peer -peer network. That elsewhere could be with a server who's making a backup copy. But the server isn't the authority. The blockchain isn't the authority, I'm the authority. And this people-centered approach to applications, we think is really empowering, right? It makes it so that applications aren't fragile. They don't break when you come to a conference and there's thousands of other people who also can't get online. Um, they keep working because they were built with you at the center, not with somebody else and their servers at the center or somebody else and their blockchains and their tokens at the center. These applications, these approaches can play well with all of those. You can build things that use Holochain and use blockchain. You can build things that use Holochain and use web servers. In fact, one of the things that we're building with Holochain is a peer-to-peer -peer web hosting marketplace. It's for doing web serving, right? The serving of content over the World Wide Web to mobile phones and browsers. What kind of content? Holochain content. On the back end, they're pulling things from the, the distributed application, but on the front end, they're serving things out to grandpa <laughs> who's trying to book a room in Los Angeles next weekend, right? Um, and so these things can play well together. Um, he was interested because of the, he felt that it was not okay for people to not be in charge of their own life. And if, even if it's not nefarious, even if it's not people spying on you, and often it is people spying on you in our current Web2 world, um, even if that's not the case, if their business model stops working, you just lost all of the content, all of the photos, all of the conversations, because not because you did something wrong, but because they didn't manage to figure out how to make it through that next quarter and they shut down the web servers and all of a sudden years of your work or your relationships is gone. We've all had that experience. That's not a good experience and it's not a necessary experience, right? It's just a consequence of how we've been building applications. And no, I mean, I think, and that's really a mindset shift that is happening more and more, I think. Um, and a lot of businesses are wanting to get out of the cloud, actually, and kind of come back down and, and move back towards that, as we are seeing centralized monopolies take over so much. 
Um, talk about what you guys are doing here. Like we're sitting next to these awesome plants, yeah. hanging out. What's yeah. who came up with this idea of the Oasis and sort of what was that vision like? So our our events team basically said, you know what? Like a our our approach, our whole approach with Holochain is inspired by nature, but also it's inspired by kind of life and family and comfort, like actual real world relationships. Yes, there's cryptography. Yes, there's math. But this is not robotic machine future. This is how do we make applications that actually work for humans in the context that humans want to live in? We want to be comfortable. We want to be surrounded by friends and family and green things, you know? <laughs> um, and, and we want to, to support, we as a, as a community, the Holochain community, want to support people being able to ship. I heard somebody in the local first community recently talk uh, do a talk on, on um, home baked apps, like home baked meals, right? Now those are not all, not every application that gets built is gonna be a unicorn. And not every application that get, gets built is even a for-profit thing. Sometimes it's, hey, I'm trying to build something that my friends might wanna use, or my family might wanna use, or my girlfriend might, want to use, right? What was the, um, was it Words with Friends? Or... Uh, yeah, that's a great game. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't remember if it was that one or the, the... I don't think it was Words with Friends. Wordle or... Wordle. Wordle. Do you, do you know the history on Wordle? I don't, but I... So the developer of Wordle made it as a gift to his, his partner, his wife, his girlfriend. Um, and because uh, she likes word games. And so he made her a word game. And then he made it available to others and it took off. That was a home-baked app. That's cool. We think that it's important that people be able to do that kind of stuff. Now today when you do something like that, you've got to pay for it to go on a web server and if it starts to take off, oh shoot, you better figure out how to make money because you've got costs. And that's not the case with Holochain. Every user brings their own device and that device does a little bit of, of storage and processing that offsets their own use. So if 10,000 people develop your app, you don't all of a sudden have a headache. You've got, cool, there's 10,000 people using my app. Well, thank you so much for the great interview. Definitely follow Holochain and honestly check out, is the app live? It's not, it's not yet live. Not live. Not live. Not yet live. Shipping with the Volaphone Quintus this fall. The Volaphone Quintus is available for sale. Um, they did do a, every year when they come up with a new device, they do a Kickstarter type thing. And um, uh, I believe they sold out in three hours and the app will be on that. And then it will also be available more generally on Android devices. Thank you so much. Um, cheers. Thank you, Zach.